Hey, I'm here, Matt AC, with uh, Peter Ulander, my boss. If you're looking at the screen and you're wondering why this guy doesn't look like Scott Sanchez, don't worry. He doesn't know why he doesn't look like Scott Sanchez either. Peter's been on the road for so long that he has no idea what time zone he's in. Very true. Or even who he is anymore. Very true. But Peter is MongoDB's CMO, and I was actually really glad that I got the chance to talk with him. And I wanted to ask him a little bit about 8.0, and then I have some other questions. So, Peter, why should a developer care about MongoDB 8.0? 8.0, sure. So, I think the most exciting thing about 8.0 is this is the best performing database we've ever come out with, right? When you look at the 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 price performance, the speed, the all of the 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 new capabilities and what it's bringing to the customers, we've put in a relentless focus on security, scalability, resiliency, etc. But I think the bigger thing is looking at how we kind of reinvented the control plane so we could actually drive extreme performance out of the platform while reducing costs for customers. It, it, it just it makes so much sense uh, for developers to be more interested in this platform than anything came before. So that's for if I'm a MongoDB developer, what I'm hearing is 8.0, better performance, better security, um, et cetera. Awesome. I it. Many developers have yet to experience MongoDB. Why should, why should some random developer, shouldn't say it that way, what, why, why should some developer, and he's not at this conference right now, sure. she's down doing her job at Vodafone or, or someplace else, why should she care about MongoDB? Yeah. Isn't it just a NoSQL database? So, you know, it's funny. So I've, I've been CMO now for what, uh, three years? years. Um, and I still remember before I joined Mongo, uh, in my own mind, um, MongoDB was a really cool, NoSQL, document-oriented database, open source, awesome, niche for you know specific types of web apps or what have you. Um, I think coming in uh, and actually seeing just the, you know, the breadth and depth of workloads that our customers are building on top of our platform. I mean, just on stage uh, 15 minutes ago, we had Nova Nordisk talking about how this basically accelerates the way that they can bring new medicines, life-changing medicines to the market on top of MongoDB, right? You think about the play we, we have um, across all of the financial institutions. You always hear is, is it secure enough? Can it do asset transactions? All of that other stuff. And the reality is, you, you know, nine out of 10 of the world's top banks are using us in some element of their four banking, banking system. So what's become really, really clear is that uh, I, I, the origins of MongoDB might have been a niche NoSQL database. The reality is where the market has gone, it's far more general purpose in nature. It's designed for a lot of these new kind of uh, scale out architectures. Um, and it, it's proven uh, to be exceptionally valuable across all industries to all different types of uh, uh, use cases out there. So I think if you're a developer thinking about, you know, either what you're going to build your next app on or if you're thinking about how do you modernize that legacy app that you're managing uh, to take advantage of new innovations like AI, for example, um, MongoDB is the best platform out there. So we didn't prep on this. Uh, That's all right. So I'm going to ask you a question that hopefully you have the answer. Uh, I think you will. So for a developer who's comfortable with Oracle, she spent her, or he spent his 20 years working with SQL Server or something. So that dirty. What's the best way for them to get started with MongoDB? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, th I think that there's a number of different ways. The good news is just the general nature of how MongoDB is architected and how developers work with data, it removes all of the complexity and rigidity that someone might have with an or Oracle database. So there's not a, you know, you don't have to go learn fundamentally new new things in that sense. You can, you can literally just kind of pick up and start going because it's, it's kind of, the, the the interface or the the well yeah the interface is built to operate just like you're writing code as well or writing a general application so it's already kind of in the core vernacular how a developer builds applications um, but I think one of the things we've done and we we announced this a few few weeks ago when we were over in India is introduced a whole new set of learning paths for developers where they can get started quickly and easily and start experimenting with the platform whether that be you know, signing up and getting into our free tier, using the the university courses, to go learn how to build your first Hello World app, to actually digging in and coming up with, you know, 
learning how to build new gen AI apps, right? You, you've been big on the hackathons out there and seeing how customers can quickly and easily get engaged with MongoDB plus AWS plus you know, Langchain and, and, um, uh, and Profic as an example to build you know, an intelligent gen AI application. We're seeing developers having the ability to come in and do that in minutes versus you know, having to spend a lot of time rethinking and relearning all of the ways that they're building up. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll give a brief plug if you ain't all right. Go to the MongoDB website, and you'll see what we call developer days. That's something that my team runs, where you can come and have a day's worth of hands-on workshops, get your hands dirty, and learn how to use it. And what we keep finding is when developers, they think it's, to, to Peter's point, they think it's something new, different, um, niche. No, but, but. When they start w working with the document model, Brains kind of explode. I actually have a, a, a customer recently sent their developers to one of our developer days, and they said our minds were blown by this. And that's the sort of thing that once you once it clicks and you see it, you're like, oh, this isn't some strange, different thing. It's just a better way of working with data. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny. Uh, you and I do have a history just from the whole open source world. If, if I go back oh, was, 20 years of my career, didn't? Yes, I'm that old. Um, there was a moment where Linux was seen as not secure enough, not scalable enough, not powerful enough, not flexible enough. You know, pick your favorite derogatory term. And that was how everybody articulated Linux versus, uh, you know, a Solaris or, or, or pick your favorite Unix. What's fascinating, though, is... If you go back to those days, when you're just looking at operating system to operating system or database to database, you can easily come up with a reason why you don't want to go somewhere. The tipping point, though, in that Linux, Unix world was when the world went from vertical scale to horizontal scale. Scale out architectures became the basis for everything. And you know, we went from these big SMP systems to little pizza boxes that, that created these server farms that ultimately became... Amazon, Google, Microsoft, um, et cetera. We're in that moment right now from, a, from a, uh, a data perspective, right? Legacy databases built decades ago were built for these big vertical scale um, uh, SMP systems. It was your system of record, right? There was limited access to it. You, you, you were, it was the right thing at that point in time. Now we're in a world where, you know, I, I hate to say cloud is mainstream, but, uh, you know, 12, 15 years in, the reality is, it, it, for a, the longest time, it was still such a small percentage of the overall workload. Now every application that's being built needs to be built for cloud scale, right? Everything is being distributed across the globe because your customers are literally everywhere. And architectures by how you build applications, right? The, 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 the compute system has changed. The packaging system has changed. The, um, the, the networking system has changed. The one thing that has not changed for most developers out there has been the data platform because of the fact that there wasn't that need for the apps to be, you know, fully distributed, locally scaled, et cetera. Well, now we're at that tipping point, especially with where we're seeing Gen AI coming, coming to life because it's that unstructured data that represents 80% of all data in the market. It is, you know, all your operational data is what actually enables you to move faster and build smarter applications. It is unstructured by nature. You think about it, it's, it, it's video, it's text, it's sound, it's metadata. It's all of these other things that are basically driving that next generation experience and the applications you want to build. Don't let, the, uh, don't let your data architecture hold you back in that sense. And to me, that was what happened in the, in the early Linux days. It was like they realized we have to not let the, uh, the, the legacy architecture hold us back and we need to go all in on this new one if we wanted to meet the needs and the demands of the market. We're on that tipping point now at the data plane, um, and I think MongoDB is really well situated to help uh, to help developers move quickly to adopt these new uh, these new spaces. I, uh, so embrace all the new, but I didn't hear you say anything that made it sound like MongoDB would be just as good for relational data structured data because you can always model your scheme. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean no. relational data, unstructured data. It's it's all about building new new applications, new experiences, right? How are you going to innovate the way you're engaging with your customers? Yeah. I think, you know, our, our powerful use cases and our customer roster and things that we enjoy on a day-to-day -day basis just kind of goes to show you that, uh, it, you know, this is where the future is.
Yeah, awesome. Peter, thank you for being the new Scott Sanchez. Hey, always happy to be Scott. He's much better looking and smarter than me. Thanks, Peter. Hey.